Hey everyone and welcome to our deep dives today. We're going to be uh, looking at the 2024 U.S. presidential election. And, uh, you know, it's really shaping up to be a nail biter. Our source materials is suggesting that it's going to come down to just a handful of states. Yeah, it's fascinating. You know, you look at the electoral map and yeah. right away, these blue wall states, Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania, those really jump out at you. They've been, you know, traditionally Democratic, but yeah. Trump was able to flip them back in 2016 and mm -hmm. it was back and forth in 2020. So those are really important. 46 electoral votes right there. If Kamala Harris can secure those states, that could be a huge step towards victory. But then on the flip side, Trump's campaign is really focusing on these states that yeah. flip from red to blue in 2020, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, and USA. So he's trying to reclaim those as mm. part of his path back to the White House. It's interesting how just a few states can really become like the center of gravity in this whole election. Totally. And, and it's not just about the states themselves, it's about the people who live there, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that our source material points out is this really interesting kind of clash of demographics and how each candidate is trying to approach those different demographics. Kamala Harris seems to be doing really well with younger voters, people in cities and minority groups, yeah. especially within the black and Asian American communities. Her campaign is very focused on issues that are really important to those groups like healthcare reform, social justice, climate change. But there are some challenges for her when it comes to certain parts of that traditional democratic base, in particular, some Latino voters where Trump seems to be gaining some traction. Yeah, that shift in Latino voter support has been really one of the most interesting things to watch in this election. You know, on the surface, it might seem counterintuitive, but mm -hmm. when you look a little deeper, it starts to make sense. States like Florida and Texas, which have always been pretty reliably Republican, we're seeing Trump getting a lot of support from Latino communities there. And a lot of that seems to be driven by concerns about the economy and alignment with Trump's more conservative social values. It's not a uniform shift by any means, but it's definitely something that could really impact the results. For sure. And on that note, it's really interesting to look at Trump's appeal among white working class and rural voters too. Absolutely. I mean, that was really key to his victory back in 2016. And it's a demographic that he is really working hard to win over again this time around. His messaging is very much targeted at that base, you know, with an emphasis on economic growth, getting rid of regulations, immigration reform. Those are all things that resonate really strongly with those voters. You know, and we can't forget about the law and order theme either. That's something that Trump has been talking about a lot. And it seems to be really connecting with voters who are concerned about crime and unrest, especially in this really polarized political environment that we're in. It's a message that taps into some very deep anxieties and can be really powerful in motivating people to vote. Definitely. And it really speaks to this bigger theme that we're seeing in this election, this kind of clash between two very different visions for America. On one side, you have Kamala Harris, and she's really pushing for this more progressive, inclusive vision focus on healthcare access, climate change, social justice, really trying to mobilize this coalition of young people, urban voters, minority groups, people who often feel like they're being left behind by the current system. And then on the other side, you have Donald Trump, and he's uh, tapping into this different kind of American dream, one that's more focused on economic opportunity, individual liberty, national identity. He's speaking to people who feel like the country is going in the wrong direction, that the values and institutions they believe in are under attack, and they need someone to fight for them. Yeah, it's almost like two different versions of the American dream are colliding. On the one hand, you have this vision of a more equitable society where the government plays a more active role in people's lives to ensure that everyone has a fair shot. And then you have this other vision, the one that Trump is talking about, yeah. which is much more focused on economic growth, deregulation, and this idea of restoring America to some kind of past glory. And it's really interesting how these two very different visions are playing out in this election. Yeah, and for Trump's base, that message really resonates. He's talking about bringing back manufacturing jobs, appealing to people who feel like globalization and technology have left them behind. And he's also really hitting hard on these themes of immigration and crime and what he calls the radical left, you know, painting this picture of a country in decline. That needs a strong leader to come in and fix everything. It's a message that really taps into a sense of frustration and disillusionment that a lot of people are feeling. For sure. And those rallies that he holds, they're a big part of how he gets that message across. They're not just about policy speeches. They're about creating the sense of energy and community, mm -hmm. giving people a space to express their anger and their fears and their hopes. He's really good at positioning himself as their champion, as the only one who truly understands them and can represent them. 
He's really playing the role of the outsider, the disruptor, yeah. the one who's willing to challenge the status quo and fight for the forgotten man. He really is. He's using that classic populist playbook and he's doing it very effectively. Mm -hmm. He's made himself into the symbol of resistance against the elites, the establishment, the media. And for his supporters, he represents a return to a simpler time, a time when America was great and they felt like they had a voice. It's a very nostalgia driven narrative, but it's incredibly powerful in terms of mobilizing voters who feel like they've been ignored by the political system. Yeah, and it's important to remember that while this message is working for his base, it's also alienating a lot of other voters. The things he says about immigration, race, and gender are really controversial. And a lot of people, even within his own party, disagree with how he's handled things like the pandemic, the economy, and foreign policy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's definitely a risky strategy. He's basically betting that the intensity of his base's support will be enough to overcome all of that opposition. And in an election this close, who knows, it might actually work. In the end, it all comes down to turnout, getting your supporters motivated enough to actually go out and vote. Yeah, and that's why both campaigns are pouring so much effort into get out the vote efforts. They're knocking on doors, making phone calls, sending out mail, running ads on social media. They're doing everything they can to get their voters to the polls. It's amazing to see the different approaches they're taking. On one side, you have Kamala Harris, who's really trying to emphasize this positive message of unity and hope. She talks about bringing people together, building a better future, tackling the challenges we face as a country. And then you have Trump, who's taking a very different approach. His message is much more about fear and grievance, promising to restore America to some imagined past greatness. He's playing on people's anxieties and insecurities, presenting himself as the strong man who can single-handedly fix everything. It's a really stark contrast in styles. It really is. It's like the country is at a crossroads, facing this fundamental decision about its identity and its future. And the outcome of this election could have a huge impact on what direction we go in. Will it be Harris's vision of hope and change? Or will it be Trump's promise of strength and restoration? Only time will tell. Well said. It's incredible to think that the whole thing could come down to just a handful of states, maybe even just a handful of votes. Our source material really emphasizes how crucial these battleground states are. It's a powerful reminder that every single vote really does matter in a democracy. Absolutely. And especially in an election this close, the margins are so thin, every vote could make a difference. It's a great reminder that our system depends on people getting involved, making their voices heard. So as we head into the final stretch of this election, what are you going to be watching for? What are the things that might give us a clue about who's going to win? Well, voter turnout is going to be absolutely key. Both campaigns are working really hard to get their people to the polls. So I'll be paying attention to early voting numbers, absentee ballots, how much energy there is at rallies and events. Those things can tell us a lot about which campaign is really resonating with voters. That makes sense. And what about the strategies that each campaign are using? What should we be watching for there? Well, in these final days, the messages and the tactics that they use are going to be really important. Will Harris try to unify the country and appeal to undecided voters? Or will she focus on getting her base really fired up? And for Trump, will he stick with this populist rhetoric that's worked so well for him? Or will he try to soften his tone and appeal to a wider range of voters? the choices they make in the next few weeks could really make a difference. It's like a giant game of chess, isn't it? Every move is calculated. Every decision could have a huge impact. And then there's always the possibility of something unexpected happening. Some event or gaffe or last minute surprise that could shift the whole race. That's right. A big news story, a mistake by one of the candidates, a sudden change in public opinion. Any of those things could have a huge impact, especially when the race is this close. That's why it's impossible to predict what's going to happen. We can analyze the data and look at the strategies, but ultimately it's up to the voters. Exactly. And that's what makes democracy so interesting. The power really does lie with the people. So as we watch all of this unfold, I encourage everyone to stay informed, have thoughtful conversations, and most importantly, get out there and vote. Your voice matters and your vote can make a difference. I agree. In a close election like this one, every single vote counts. This is a really important moment for our country. And the choices we make now are going to have a big impact on our future. Stay engaged, stay informed, and make your voice heard. This has been a fascinating deep dive into the 2024 election. Thanks for joining us on this journey. And remember, this story is far from over. The most exciting chapter is still being written.